Hey everybody, it's Jason Baja here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about uh, understanding that range of motion can sometimes be an ambiguous term. Meaning, uh, when we think of range of motion, you really have to ask yourself, are we doing the full range of motion of an exercise, or are we doing the full range of motion of a muscle? And that muscle in relation to, obviously, joint angles. Uh, because there is a difference, because a lot of exercises actually can take us beyond the range of motion of a muscle to the point to where that muscle is no longer even being used. Uh, and in many cases, the full range of motion of an exercise may not take the muscle through a full range of motion. Um, perfect example right here, deadlift. I love the deadlift. Deadlift is one of the greatest strength builders of all time. It is, in my opinion, the greatest exercise of all time. However, do you see any muscles in the deadlift working through their full range of motion? No. Even when performing the, the full range of motion on the exercise like I am doing, I'm going all the way to lockout. A lot of people skip that. No muscle is being put into a full length and position. All right? Now, a lot of muscles have a lot of load, and this is one reason I love this exercise. But if our goal is to maximize muscle size... Uh, we probably need to take muscles through through the longest range of motion possible. So a better example, let's take uh, this Romanian deadlift you see me doing in the background. I did this after that deadlift set. I went over and did RDLs. Now, even though technically I'm stopping just right, maybe an inch off the floor, I'm taking the hamstring through a longer range of motion. Notice that the hamstring gets stretched further on the RDL than it does on the conventional deadlift, even though I'm starting off the floor technically doing a slightly longer range of motion okay this is this is an important point when you're selecting your exercises we have to ask ourselves what is it that we're doing what is what is our goal of this exercise when you're selecting it when determining how to perform it okay same with the benching here uh, when with exercises like this when i want to perform a harder version of the bench what do you see me doing pretty much doing it close to flat back. I mean, it's a little hard for me to get into a flat back position, but I'm real close. Um, I'm gripping it in a manner that puts my elbows at the first pos furthest possible position down to the bottom. My grip width is set to where I'm completely stacked at the bottom, which means the pecs are put into the deepest stretch possible. So you're asking why am I doing that? Because I'm taking the bench press into a deeper range of motion than it would normally if I did the full power version, okay? If you go for a different grip width, it doesn't bring the elbows as low, guess what? Pecs don't get worked through quite as much range of motion. If we arch, we take range of motion out. They're all full range of motion. Any of those setups, no matter where I grip it, no matter where I arch, if I lock out at the top and I touch my chest at the bottom, the exercise went through a full range of motion. But the muscles can be taken into a different range of motion by adjusting it. All right, same with my incline bench. What am I doing here? I'm taking a grip width that puts the pecs into the deepest stretch because notice my elbows go lower. Therefore, my arm angle is deeper. All right, I'm trying to work my chest as hard as I possibly can on the incline benching. Why? Because I'm trying to build these muscles up. Okay, understand why you're doing a thing because they all have their place. I mean, keep in mind, I am a strength athlete first and foremost, but a lot of my training is geared towards gaining muscle, right? So same thing with the rows here, stretching the lats. Now, could I bend further over to the floor and use more lower back and more hamstring? Sure. Could I touch the bar lower on my stomach and cut range of motion? Yes. But in this case, I'm trying to work the lats through the longest range of motion possible. So I'm locking them, spreading them at the bottom, trying to get a stretch. And then I'm touching up on the chest instead of on the abdomen. Why? I've increased the total range of motion that the lats and the traps and everything have to go through. Because as I've noticed, I'm doing it for pretty high reps. I'm using it for hypertrophy. I'm not trying to use it as a, as a power or strength builder at that point. I'm using it to gain muscle. I'm using it to build my back. Now, granted, grip and stuff like that, too. I'm sure, there's some isometric components to uh, other muscles involved, but I am primarily doing that to build my traps and my lats and rhomboids and posterior delts. So I'm taking them to the longest range possible. Same thing, these skull crushers, rocking it back to my forehead, 
taking the tricep through the longest range of motion to get it into a stretch position. Now, could I take it behind the head and do something else? Sure. Would that really stretch the elbow tendon any further, right? The lower parts? Not really. All right, curls. I've done videos on this. I'm locking out at the bottom and I'm bringing up, I'm bringing my elbows back instead of bringing it to my face, which would use shoulders and, and then take tension off the biceps. I'm just taking the bicep through its full range of motion, bringing the elbows back a hair so that the elbow goes through its entire full range of motion. I'm leaned forward so that I can get a deeper stretch. Now, if I were to lean back, the full range of motion would not work the bicep through the full range of motion, would it? If I were to lean back and then bring it to my face both, I technically would take the bicep and the elbow joint through a shorter range of motion even though the bar moved further. Do you see where we're going and why we need to think about these things? You have to ask yourself, am I training a movement or am I training a muscle? Both have their place. All right, same thing with squatting here. This isn't power squatting. I'm doing full squats here, right? Narrow stance, heels are fairly close together. High bar position, I'm dropping ass to grass and pausing. All right, look how deep of a stretch it puts on the quads. This is loading the quads through a longer range of motion than if I were to be doing a power squat, in which I would just be training a movement pattern, right? For the purpose of getting stronger at that. But if I want my quads to get the most stimulus, I probably need to get them into that lengthened position. All right, again, compare some of these things. Again, I'm gonna have some of these running through again while I'm talking. Nothing is taken through a, a longer range of motion on the deadlift here. Now, this is the difference. I'm training a movement. Is it giving some muscle growth? Sure, I'm moving a big heavy weight for multiple reps. Of course, it's building some muscle. Is it maximizing development of any muscle? No. No, absolutely not. It's giving some growth to a lot of muscles because it's a big exercise. But I'm training a movement. I'm doing that, getting stronger at the deadlift. In that case, I'm training a movement. Conversely, again, by comparison, what do we see here? Now I'm training muscles. I'm putting the hamstrings into a deep stretch. I'm using this primarily as a hamstring exercise. Okay? Similar movement, different range of motion, but different joint angles, different stretches on muscles. The other, I was training a movement pattern. In this case, I'm training the hamstrings. They're put into a deeper stretch. All right. So hopefully this kind of creates some context for these sort of things and people understand what we mean by this and understanding how to use these different tools and why. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.